We have come a very long way. We have been embarked on this exercise since 2005. It has been a labor of love. But I want to tell you that we are getting close to the finishing line. We have embarked on this exercise based on faith we always knew that faith could carry us through. We have had significant support from many friendly countries. And uh, I recognize in the audience the man we call the Professor Leonardo Perez and his dear wife. He is, of course, the consultant engineer at the IEDC. And the man who was sent from Cuba to lead uh, the air side works, all of the works that you see on the air side is being done and coordinated by engineer Leonardo Perez. Venezuela and President Chavez have made a marked contribution to, to the work that we are doing at Argyle. We have had a significant support from Trinidad and Tobago. We have got some assistance from the CARICOM Development Fund they have provided us a loan and grant in the sum of 4.2 million US dollars to assist with our pavement works. We've got small contributions from Iran and uh, Austria. And uh, we have, of course, our good friends, Taiwan, financing the terminal building. So we started with faith, and we got a lot of help. And today, I can tell you that we are nearing completion of something that we all thought at one time was almost impossible. We have at this stage completed 72% of the earthworks that are required to be done. And we are on track to complete these artworks by mid-2013. We are putting in place right at this time all of the measures and to acquire all of the equipment that we need to do the pavement works. And we expect to start pavement works in the latter half of this year. And these pavement works are likely to extend over a 12-month period. You know, we are not going to be doing them Constantly, we are going to be having some, some works here and stop and start and so on. But in total, the works are likely to sum up to about 12 months. The terminal building is being built, and as I said, it has been financed by Taiwan. That terminal building is being built by a Taiwanese company called OECC, and they are on track to complete the terminal by. November 2030. Today, the works are about 20% complete. We do have some other small buildings to be built, for example, the control tower, the fire station, and the cargo terminal. And we also have to build some circulation roads and parking lots. But these are fairly small works relative to what we are doing and relative to what we have done. I doubt anyone who knows from whence we came and who sees where we are today can doubt that we will finish by the end of 2013. So today we are not talking anymore about whether we will finish. What we are doing now is taking it almost for granted that we will finish by 2013 December. And we are now on the next leg, essentially, of the journey of preparing ourselves for the operational phase of the airport. If we are building the airport, we need to put 
several things in place to make sure that the airport works for us. We can't simply build it and expect that everything will fall into place. We have to actively put things in place. So we have asked our colleagues in the private sector and from the government departments to come here tonight to start a conversation with us as a nation and those who have braved it to come out here tonight to start talking about what do we need to do? What are the things that should be done now to make sure that when the airport begins operating in 2014, that we are ready to reap the rewards from this huge investment. That is important. I myself can tell you about some of the opportunities that are available within the airport fence. And I have spoken about these opportunities before, and I will do so again tonight. There are significant opportunities, and perhaps one of the big ones is for fuel storage and sales. And I know at least there's one person here who has expressed an interest in it. And I would dearly love to see even Sension own company get involved in the storage and sale of fuel at the airport. It perhaps might be a small business today, but perhaps in 20 years' time, it could be huge. So we need to take a long-term view of some of these business opportunities. Cargo operations. For the first time, we are going to be having a cargo terminal and a dedicated cargo apron. In fact, the apron that we are building at Argyle is likely to hold simultaneously two 7 to 7 jets. These are the Ameritype aircraft that brings cargo here. And so we have an apron that could hold, that could pack two of these jets simultaneously. And so we are going to have to have a cargo terminal that could provide and accommodate the type of cargo that would um, supply these aircraft. And that cargo terminal is designed and we are quite keen on having a business partner either in joint venture or single-handedly invest in this facility. After all, it is a business. Cargo is a business. And from my vantage point, there is no reason at all why government should be involved in business. Government is not a business. So that whenever there are business opportunities, we should be encouraging business people to come forward and take them up. Government should not really, in principle, be building a cargo terminal. So that is one significant opportunity that is available. And uh, I trust that there are Vincentians who are hearing and perhaps wondering and thinking, are there partners with whom we can get involved together to make this investment and to operate this facility. Catering for airlines. This is an opportunity. Any airline that comes here, especially a fairly big aircraft, 727, 737, they're going to have to uh, restock for the persons who are going back on their journey. So they're going to need a provider, a caterer, to provide the kind of food that they normally would um, either sell to their passengers or provide to their passengers. And uh, I understand that this is a fairly lucrative business for those who are involved in it. We don't want an aircraft to come here and have to buy their food on a second leg in Barbados or in Trinidad or in uh, St. Lucia. We want them to be able to buy as many services as possible from St. Vincent. But if it is not here, I'm sure they would find alternative suppliers. So this is an opportunity that we ought to be thinking about. And uh, we at the IEDC are prepared to work as much as we possibly can with our local businesses to help to set up these facilities. There is a lot of space in the terminal building for shops. It is a big terminal building. In fact, it is about six times the size of the E.T. Joshua terminal. 
And I know that a lot of persons have expressed interest in the shops, but I can tell you that there is a lot of space for shops. So we need not rush. We have enough for everybody. But no harm in coming forward now. <laughs> there, we have built a fairly sizable apron for what we call general aviation, that is for the jets. In fact, the general aviation apron at Argyle is far bigger than the commercial apron because we expect to attract a number of jets and these jets we expect when they come, they stay for a while so that we have to have enough space so that those that are staying for two weeks can stay for two weeks and still there should be space for those that are coming and going frequently. But when you have jets coming and the number of jets that we can accommodate, you're going to need what we call fixed base operators to provide services to the jets. And uh, I know there are persons in here who know about this other service. And uh, I know these jet setters, uh, they tend to have deep pockets. So nobody who is involved in this business ought to make a loss. So this, again, is not a good opportunity for anyone who is enterprising enough and who is prepared to make some money. All of these opportunities that we're talking about are opportunities for making money. And we as a country have invested in this airport. And we really, as a people, should position ourselves, position ourselves to make the money from the investment opportunities. We shouldn't sit back and wait until someone comes from overseas and take up the opportunity and then we start talking ill of them. We are the early bird investors and we will suck the cherries. And I want to encourage you to start thinking seriously about these. Thank you.